May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward our beloved Amir and Shaykh Abu Ayman. For indeed, he was my main inspirer for me going to the Islamic University. And as you all know, he was the person who initiated Bifadl Khalik al-Zawajal, the ASWJ in Australia, back at least 20 years ago. إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا وسيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has facilitated for his slaves the ways to his blessings. He alone controls the days and the months. He makes the day enter into the night and he makes the night enter into the day. Allah Ta'ala has created a cause for every little thing. As He makes a decree for every matter, hence a reckoning for every single deed. My dear brothers and sisters, this earthly existence that you are currently walking on, this world, this globe is like a big shopping mall, like a big market where people go back and forth. Now sad to say that only the minority of humanity and probably the minority of jinn have realized the essence of their existence. The reason behind the realization of man on this earth. So this minority realizing why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala placed them on this earth. They have freed themselves. They have liberated themselves from the shackles, from the chains, from the imprisonment of the two horned, ugly, deceiving beast. But sad to say, that is, that the majority of humanity and the majority of jinn, per se, they have enslaved themselves in this big shopping complex this earth, they have enslaved themselves to the loaves of this deceiving materialistic world. Hence, they have chained and shackled and imprisoned themselves to the shackles of the two horned, ugly, deceiving beast, the devil. Brothers and sisters, Days and nights which you are living in, know that they are only parts and stages of your life. Whenever a day goes past, know that a part of you likewise goes past. The passage of each day reduces your lifespan brings your deeds to a gradual end and then what happens it brings you closer to the one who made you your lord the almighty so all those who are doing righteousness all of you who have chosen the path that pleases allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make sure that you show your gratitude 
and your appreciation to no other than Him and continue doing righteousness until you meet your Lord, Allah Ta'ala. As for those who have transgressed against their souls, who have oppressed and wronged themselves, who are committing sin upon sin, despair not the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Despair not the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he forgives He accepts It is never too late But if you are a person Who is transgressing Against his soul Repent Not tomorrow but today Before the door of repentance Ceases to be open Closes Imam al-Sunnah Ahmad ibn Muhammad ibn Hanbal Abu Abdullah al-Shaybani was asked a very important question. Listen carefully. This question can be weighed equal to mountains if you understand and you implement this advice. He was asked by his students Will there ever be rest? In other words, we are living on this earth and we have to work. We have to sweat. We have to toil. Will we ever rest? He was asked. Because Fajr, you have to awaken in the morning to please Allah. So you awaken with ease, with love, and with comfort, because you know Allah loves this deed. So because you know Allah loves this deed, you will not sleep in. Because whatever Allah loves, you love. And whatever Allah hates, you hate. And whatever angers Allah, you are also angered by it. So look at this, look at this question. Look how simplistic but how important it is. Will there ever be rest? Ya Aba Abdullah. What was the response? A simple, easy answer. But it means mountains in weight. Not, he said, until you place your first foot into Jannah. Did you understand this? The time that you will retire, that you will rest, because on this earth, it's a plantation as we said earlier on today. But the time that you shall rest is the time that you place your first foot in al Khaliq Azza wa Jal into Jannah. So work, work, and don't procrastinate. Don't become lax or laborious to that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala loves. We praise the Almighty Allah for blessing us with this beautiful deen. Brothers and sisters, do you know the blessing that you have before your arms, before your hands, before your lives? Do you recognize what Allah has given you? He's given you Islam. Know that Islam is the only deen, the only way, the only religion that provides the cure, the medicine, the solution to what? Wallahi, to the world's perplexing social problems. And He has given you this. He has blessed you with this. So hold on to this beautiful deen and portray it in a way that Allah loves. Go out there, propagate this deen, show it to the world, proclaim the grace of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, show them what Islam is with good character and ethics and morals. This deen is the only deen that teaches 
a perfect and excellent unadulterated concept of pure tawhid of pure monotheism islam is built on oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he alone is the creator no one else for this reason we do not compromise islam cannot compromise with anything that goes against the oneness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whether it is Trinitarianism, or paganism, or idolatry, or polytheism, or racism, or nationalism, or imperialism, or colonialism, or socialism, or communism, or secularism, or liberalism, or any other deviated ism out there. Why? Because all these deviated groups, مَا قَدَرُ اللَّهَ حَقَّ قَدْرِ They made not a just estimate of Allah, such as His duty. Allah blessed us, ya ikhwati al-a'iza, ya akhwati al-a'iza. He blessed us by creating us in the most favored of all nations, not only as Muslims, but we are blessed to be amongst the most favored umam, the most favored nations, the nation of the greatest man that walked this earth. And who was he? Muhammad ibn Abdullah Did you realize this? Do you realize the importance of what you're holding? Do you really recognize what Allah has blessed you with? If you are blinded to this, if your mind is sealed from this, if you are oblivious from this, you have a major problem in your faith. Brothers and sisters, don't undermine what you have been blessed with. When you say La ilaha illallah, say it with beauty, with happiness, with izza, with love, with desire, with wantonness. Today, fitna, tribulations, afflictions and trials raises its ugly head. In other words, the horns of the devil have appeared in every part of the globe. We see the winds of evil among mankind blow immensely everywhere because if we see the atmosphere we are living in what do we find satan everywhere the atmosphere that we are surrounded by today is no other than an atmosphere of greed of lust of competition of jealousy of envy of hatred of backbiting, of slander, an atmosphere of darkness, devastation, war, turmoil, an atmosphere where the good is looked at as bad, and the bad is looked at as good. This is what we are living in. Juvenile delinquency, our youth, and what they are affected what they are affected by. Go outside and see what our youth are affected by. How many of our young brothers and sisters have we lost to the streets? How many of our Muslim youth have we lost to the clubs and pubs? How many of our youth, Muslim youth, have we lost to drugs? How many of them have we lost to Western culture? How many of them have we lost to alcohol abuse, to hip hop, to sexual promiscuity? How many? 
How many? How many of them have adopted patterns of behavior, ways and traditions, culture and customs, which is absolutely repugnant to a sincere believer? We are experiencing a global phenomenon. And what does this mean? It means that we are currently experiencing a monoculture of consumption, consumerism, but the most dangerous of all is what? Western culture. Western culture. Which the entire globe has been eaten by it at an incredible, rapid way. How many of our youth have been affected by Western lifestyle? How many of our youth have lost, lost their Islamic identity? Where is it? How many of them have lost their Islamic life? Who they are, they have lost themselves where their hearts have been influenced by un-Islamic ways. Brothers and sisters, we are facing one of the greatest challenges of our time, that which is known as the dominant global culture. The globalization, which in reality is westernization, but that definitely means no other than Americanization. Americanization. Those who travel the earth, wherever you go on this earth, anywhere in the world, wallahi, in the most remote regions where the people are living in abject poverty, they cannot even afford to have one meal per day in those lands and every other part of the land on this earth. What do we see? We see huge billboards of famous Western actors. Of what? Famous Western actors doing what? Advertising no other than Haram. Western actors on these billboards advertising the drinking of alcohol, the smoking of cigarettes, promiscuous behavior, nudity, drugs, and all sorts of Haram. This is the effect, Wallahi, of globalization. This is the effect of Americanization even to our youth because these countries in the most remote regions, a lot of these areas are Muslims. So we are losing these young Muslims to these billboards. When you see a famous actor on a billboard calling out to our youth, crying out to our youth, saying, obey your thirst, obey your thirst. Do you know what that means? What does it mean? Obey your thirst. What does it mean? Who can tell me? This is portrayed on billboard. These Western actors in big writing coming out of his dirty mouth saying, obey your thirst. What does it mean? Obey your nafs, obey your low, commanding, evil, wicked, mischievous ego. That's what it means. In other words, eat, drink, be merry, do whatever you so desire, they say. You only live once. This is their motto. This is their way. This is their life and unfortunately, we are imitating this. We are living this lifestyle. 
nothing other than a central obsession of ignorance of Yahidiyyah. And one of the interesting things about human beings is that we tend to mimic, we tend to imitate, we tend to desire to emulate so-called uh, role models, which in reality they are devilish entities. So when our youth see these famous actors calling out to them, come, this is the life. Don't worry about restriction. Don't worry about prohibition. Don't worry about commandments. Do whatever you so desire. Whatever your nafs tells you, do it. Enjoy. Indulge. Delve into haram. You only live today, they say. And tomorrow you shall die. So don't let anyone stop you. Liberation, they call it. Freedom, they call it. Which in reality is no more than subjugation to the two horned, ugly, deceiving devil. The message of haram. The message of ignorance. The message of no other than the devil. I went into a house just recently. And one of the brother's homes. And I saw his children watching Harry Potter. You know, you may think this is a harmless fiction. Or a useless or a entertainment that there's no harm in it. Wallahi, wallahi, it is dangerous. And this television is destroying our minds. Is destroying our hearts. Because the widespread impact of the mega monster devilish propaganda machine is over all media, whether it's television, films, movies, electronic media, newsprint, books, magazines, pornography, whether softcore or hardcore, it's all haram. They said, whatever softcore, softcore? Is there anything called softcore pornography in Islam? All oh, displays of nudity is inappropriate and haram for viewing. Ya ikhwati la It is haram for you to even get magazines like Cleo or I don't know these days what they got Dolly? What else? Cosmopolitan? Huh? Or any other new ID? Huh? Which is the new shaitan. He's always got new IDs uh, all the time. There's a new idea, a new evil way, in other words. It is haram for us to view this haram. We cannot view this. This is still haram for us to view. Even the sisters. It is haram for you to view the aura of a woman. And I'm pretty sure these magazines that are placed on the coffee table in your homes, uh, they carry no more than man's nudity. Why would you perv and look at the opposite sex or even the same sex if the aura is there? It is haram. This is Western influence. This is destruction. And this is Western culture that is a satanic brain washer indoctrinating you with the belief that you are allowed it's okay you see to see to view to do to hear the devil's voice so all those who have in their homes these magazines or these newspapers Burn it or just throw it in the trash. Because you are not allowed, O oh servant of Allah, to have these in your homes. How many 
husbands or fathers or brothers allow their wives to view AFL. Because here in Melbourne, you guys play AFL, correct? While in Sydney, it's NRL. Or the cricket. Or football, soccer. Or swimming. You're sitting down with your wife, with your daughter, with your mother, with your sister, viewing haram. And how dare you allow that servant of Allah, who you are responsible for, and you are her guardian and her shepherd, view this trash. Brothers and sisters, we cannot do this. You are not allowed to do this. It is haram for you to do this. And you are committing sin. And you will carry her burden as well. Although she will be sitting as well. As one brother said to me one time, he was watching the tennis. I said, Akhi, what are you doing? You can't watch this. The brother was watching the, sister, the ladies playing tennis. He goes, no, nah, Shaykh, I'm not watching tennis. I'm watching the ball. I said, astaghfirullah al does not Allah Ta'ala know what you are doing? So going back to this family that I entered upon, one of the students, and they're sitting down, his children, about six of them, Tabarakallah, watching Harry Potter. I said, Akhi, what are, you, what are you doing? Because, what do you mean, Shaykh? Because, how can you allow your children to watch this? He goes, a harmless fiction. Harmless entertainment. I go, harmless? Harmless? This film, whatever you think about it, glorifies, magnifies, promotes paganism, promotes shirk, promotes evil. Harmless? Teaching your children, huh? Shirk, magic, the drinking of unicorn blood. What does Harry Potter do in this film? And his devilish schoolmates. What do they do? Other than cast spells. Learn magic. Brew potions. Learn how to tell the future. Learn what's known as transfiguration. Or numerology. Or astrology. Or crystal gazing. What else is in that film? And this is called harmless. Wallahi, this person did not understand Tawheed. This person did not understand Islam. For verily, this film is built on shirk upon shirk. From start to end. It even belittles those who are non-magicians. They're called, I think in the film, muggles. It belittles the non-magicians as being narrow-minded. Uh, they're weak, they're basic, they're ignorant, they're boring. It teaches the child this, that the non-magician muggles are weak, boring, ignorant, feeble-minded people. While the magicians, they're the classy intellectuals, the academic and you say this is harmless. So you see these young fellows, young Muslim youth, surrounding themselves with Harry Potter memorabilia, with the wand, with a broomstick, with shirts of Harry Potter, with books, with puppets, toys. SubhanAllah, Khalik Azza wa Jal. Showing their loyalty and their allegiance and their love to a mushrik to a mushrik an enemy of Allah Ta'ala and we claim it as harmless fiction or entertainment do you really believe that Umar ibn Khattab today will allow his children on that sat satanic screen watching Harry Potter honestly now and he will say oh it's only harmless entertainment A'udhu bin Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would 
get extremely angry to the extent where the veins will pop from his face when he saw anything that was negating Tawheed. And immediately he would stop it with no question. Then and there, this is the monoculture of Western culture, Western lifestyle. And the pan al Khalik Azzawajal, the narration actually mentions it. That we so will imitate the non-Muslims. So much so that if they entered the hole of a sand lizard, we will quickly follow them. Believing their ways is more opulent, more affluent, more classy, more enjoyable, more pleasant, more sensational. And we allow our children to indulge in this haram. Likewise, you see cartoons, for example, on television, but the majority of today's cartoons, wallahi, teaches either shirk, kufr, haram, boyfriend and girlfriend, and look at the way they are dressed even in cartoons. They glorify nudity. Do we not open our eyes to the realization of this Western culture? Ya ikhwatil a'izza, ya akhwat. This is not a minor issue. This is something very, very serious. Hold onto the grasp, the stronghold. Cling onto Islam. Show your loyalty, your izza. Your allegiance in what Allah has given you. Do you not remember Omar's statement? Whoever shows izzah or loyalty or honor or allegiance to other than Islam, he will belittle you, humiliate you, degenerate you, disparage you. You end up being trash like them. How many of our sisters are allowed? From their husbands, they allow them to watch the bold and beautiful or days of our life. How many? And when you come home, she's upset and angry because she's taken the role, the model of those satanic individuals. So when you come home, tired from work, she just pounces you. Why? This, that, no, no, this, that. What? What? What are you talking about? What's going on now? What happened? But it's you. You're the reason. You've allowed her to do this. So you can't blame her. Although she's blamed, you cannot blame her because it's from your own hands. Brothers and sisters, wake up. Wake up and control your house. Control who you are to that which Allah loves. This is the reality of globalization. Wherever you may go, wherever you are, you have America in your house, America in your backyard, America in your front yard, America in your bedroom. In your lifestyle, in your dress code, in your eating, drinking, in your speech, in your actions. Because Americanization has enveloped us all, in particular our children. 